Hi ladies, um, what we're going to do is create a um, cut file to be sent to our um, fabric cutting machines using a template file from Electric Quilt. The first thing we're going to do is open Electric Quilt. We're going to open an existing project. The one that we're template that we're going to print from is in a Mrs. Lincoln sampler. It shows you my picture. I select OK. It brings up this is my block one. This is what we're going to be um, saving as a PDF file um, to oh, bring into Inkscape so that it becomes a cut file without tracing it. So we can close this down. We can go up to work table, work on quilt block. In my um, sketchbook is the block that I want. I simply click edit. It brings it up. Um, and this is what we are going to um, create the PDF file out of. So on the file menu, if we go up here to file menu, we make sure our printer is set up to PDF, which it's not. So we choose PDF and click OK. We now then go to the file menu and choose print. We want to print um, the template as a PDF. You will notice up here that is the name is block one. If you're doing it for the first time that will be blank and you can edit the name and type what you want. The next thing you will notice is um, the size of my block. Use the block from the work table. My seam allowance is a quarter of an inch. Print seam allowances is checked print the preview to make sure that that's what we're going to get and we say OK. <coughs> Excuse me. We can select print from here. It's launching my PDF file. <coughs> Excuse me. It's asking us where we want to save this to and we are going to choose, we're going to name it first block one. PDF file format. Block 1 is the name. PDF file is the format. We click on desktop and we click save. You can now reduce this down to see that you've got both pieces with your seam allowances inclu in, in, included. You can close this down. You can now close electric quilt because we're done with it. We are now going to open Inkscape. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it's going to take a few seconds. Here is a blank Inkscape page. For those that are familiar with Inkscape, this is customary and this is what you would use to design whatever it is that you want to design. But what we're going to do is import our PDF file that we printed of our template. So on the document, we so from the file menu, we select Import. It's going to ask us what we want to import. We are importing a PDF file. Oh, where is it? Here it is, Adobe. Adobe PDF. My block is block one. I select open. This is the whole layout of the block, but we're only interested in printing the template or creating the template. These are the defaults. If you're an experienced Inkscape um, user, you would know how to adjust these to what you want. 
But for our purposes, we're going to leave the defaults as they are. We're going to select OK. And it then brings in <coughs> our PDF file. Now, if you look at this, I'm going to drag it over. Let me find the handle. You'll see the little four arrows. I'm going to drag it to my page. And you will notice that the cut lines are not visible. We want to make those visible so that we can cut them. So we're going to go over here to Transform Properties and select Fill and Stroke. We're going to select Stroke Style. <clears throat> and because it is set to 0, 0, you don't see them. So if we choose this to inches and we choose to set the size to 2.0, the minute we um, use our Enter key, they will appear. And voila. The next thing that we want to do is to create our whole work page file the size of our mat so that we could do, if we were only doing this block up here, we could duplicate it and cut many of them and make sure that they fit on the mat properly. So what we're going to do is go over to the file menu bar, select file, and go down to document properties. You will notice that on the general files it's set to millimeter. Choose inches. Um, these are the different sizes that you can choose, but we're going to do a custom size. We want to choose inches so that we can see. This is what this page property is set to, but we want to change it to your cutting mat size. So if you double click it, it will highlight it and you want to type 11.65 for width and 11.73 for the height. If I slide this over, you can see the, cha the size of my work page has changed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and set our grid so that we can actually see our mat and how we would place our fabric on there. So we are going to go to grids and you can see there are no grids set. So we're going to choose new. We're going to we're going to define our grids. We're going to uncheck snap to visible grids. Um, you will then notice that this down here dots show dots instead of lines. We want to see the actual lines. So if we uncheck this, our actual grid shows up of what would be our cutting mat size. We then want to set the major line on our grid to a different color. So by choosing it, I'm choosing red. I'll slide my little bubble over here to red. As long as it's set to 64, you're OK. And we choose OK. You'll notice the red lines now. And right here, major grid, every, this is actually an inch sign. It's set to 5. We wanted it every 6, six inches. You can make that whatever you want. If you want them at 2 inches or 3 inches because you have a 2 inch um, template, you could set it to that. But I set it to 6 because I usually cut fabric at 6 inches by 6 inches. We are now done with this. Oh, no we're not. We go to snaps now and we don't want them to snap uh, unless we select a spot. So on snaps, only one closer than, remove that to one. Snap grids to snap only when and um, closer than, slide your slider all the way to the left to the one. On snap to grid, snap only when closer than, because we don't want them to snap to each other. <coughs> 
we want to move it apart. If you were duplicating, you could adjust these so that they would be, um, you know, a little closer um, than right on top of each other. But for our purposes, we're only dealing with two, so these are the settings that we are going to use. We can now shut this down, but we still have items on here that we don't want on our page. If we go to our, let me slide back over, if we go to our, our objects properties down here, you select objects, it says this is my block one and these are the various layers. If you choose the first layer, you will notice that it has this line. If we didn't delete that, it would cut. We don't want that. So we hit the delete button on our keyboard and it is gone. <clears throat> we choose the ne next path object. And this is our seam allowance that we want to keep. So we don't delete that. We go down to the next object and it is a text object and it is the name of what that block would be so we delete that if we continue on you will notice that this path is the actual um, finished size of what the block would become we don't want that so delete that so now all we have left is our um, seam allowance line we go down to the next object, and it is the seam allowance for our um, two and a half inch squares. So we keep that. We go down to the next object, and that is the name of this block or block segment, which is A, and we don't want that, so we delete it. We go down to our next object, and that is the finished uh, triangle and we delete that. Now you will notice that it has only the seam allowance lines left. If I select that, I can position it or toggle up using my arrows key to get it within my six inch piece of fabric. I can select this one and slide it over To where we want it to cut. Now there are two ways of getting everything cut at once. You could either select one of these items, for example this one, and copy it, create a new document, um, and paste it in there, and then duplicate it, or you can just leave it as it is and save it as a savage file and when you get it to your cutter, um, duplicate the items. For this lesson, all we are going to do is leave it the way they are, and I will adjust them when I get to my cutting machine. <clears throat> so what we want to do is save this as a Savage file to take to our cutting machine. So we go up to the menu. Oops, slid too far fast fingers go up to the file menu bar choose file and save as if you open this up you will see many types of things that you could save to but we're going to save it as an Inkscape file <coughs> so we choose Inkscape the name of the file at this point is drawing we want to Delete that and put block one. So there's block one is the name of my file and it's a savage file and I save it. We can now uh, close this down. We have a blank page. If we go over here to our desktop you will see block one savage file. If I double click on it, it will open up um, Inkscape again and show you that all we have is our um, outlines 
of our seam allowances to be cut. That's it. If you've gotten this far, you will notice up here Block 1 Savage. If you have that, congratulations. You've successfully created a cut file to be used on your cutting machine. Most cutting machines accept Savage file. There was nothing to trace, just to highlight and outline. Um, this concludes our lesson. Um, I'm not going to install my um, flash drive and copy and paste it to it and take it to my cutting machine, but um, I think you all know how to do that. If not, just message me and I can walk you through how to do that. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you leave feedback on the Electric Quilt Users Group on Facebook, I would really appreciate it and let me know what you think of it. Thank you.